Recently, I did a study in the scriptures on what happens when we worship. And I found nine different things that happen when we worship. Number one, worship brings the presence of Jesus. Revelation 22 verses 3 and 4 tell us, No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face. So as we worship, we invite the presence of the Lord among us. Psalms tells us that he inhabits the praises of his people. So as we praise him, as we worship him, he comes and he lives among us. Number two, worship removes the curse. The verse that I just read says, No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him. So as we worship Jesus, he comes to live among us, and when he comes, the curse is removed. Number three, worship brings forgiveness. Luke 7 tells the account of the immoral woman who came to Jesus and broke her alabaster jar of perfume at his feet. And Jesus looked at her and said, your sins are forgiven. Because as we worship, we're forgiven. Number four, worship brings healing. Jeremiah 8.22 says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? The word Gilead means worship. So the verse is really saying, is there not healing in worship? Is there not the great physician present there? So worship brings healing. Number five, worship brings freedom. Acts 16 tells the story of Paul and Silas in prison. And the Bible says that as they worshiped, they were set free and not only were they set free, but those around them were set free as well. So worship sets us free, and it sets those around us free. Number six, worship brings blessing. Jeremiah 32, 39 says, I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of their descendants, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. So worship brings the blessing of God upon our lives. Number seven, worship brings the voice of the Holy Spirit. Acts 13 verse two says that one day as the early church was worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoints Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So it was as they were worshiping that the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Worship brings the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number eight, worship brings us face to face with God. Revelation 22, three and four says, his servants will worship him and they will see his face. As we worship Jesus, we are brought face to face with God. Number nine, worship brings other people to Jesus. There's an amazing verse in Exodus. It's Exodus 28, verse 29. And it talks about Aaron. Um, it tells us about the chest piece that Aaron would wear that had the um, stones, gemstones, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And those were on the chest piece. He would wear this chest piece when he walked into the Holy of Holies. So let me um, read the verse to you. It says, in this way, Aaron will carry the names of the tribes of Israel on the sacred chest piece over his heart when he goes into the holy place. This will be a continual reminder that he represents the people when he comes before the Lord. So I want you to see that Aaron carried the people on his heart when he went into the presence of God. He brought them to the Lord. He represented them before the Lord. This is intercession, worship, is prayer, worship is intercession. Because in worship, we carry other people into the presence of God. The Lord knows that we have people on our hearts. We have family members, we have friends. We have people that we care about that we want to see breakthrough in their lives. And as we worship, we carry those people on our hearts into the presence of God. We represent them. In some ways, we, we come into worship and we worship as them. We sing as them. We declare their breakthrough as them. And this is amazing because this is how worship is intercession. 
And in some ways, this frees you from having to pray for everything. Many people have such a long prayer list that they never actually pray through anyway. And they feel guilty because they never pray through the prayer list. Well, the Lord knows. Like you, don't, you don't have to. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows the things on your heart. Often the best thing to do, the best way to intercede for all the people that you want to pray for, is just to come into his presence and worship. So worship is intercession, and it brings other people to Jesus. So these are the nine um, things that happen as we worship. Worship brings the presence of Jesus. It removes the curse. It brings forgiveness. It brings healing. It brings freedom. It brings the blessing of God. It brings the voice of the Holy Spirit. It brings us face to face with God. And it brings other people to Jesus. So this is the power of worship. There have been many times when I've said, I will worship through the darkness until I see your face. I will worship through the sickness until I am healed. Because worshiping in darkness, worshiping in sickness, worshiping when we don't understand, that's a sacrifice that we can only give the Lord now. In heaven, there won't be sickness. In heaven, there won't be darkness. In heaven, there won't be bondage. As we worship now, we're offering the Lord a sacrifice of praise, an offering that we'll never be able to give him again. We'll never again have a chance at this moment right now. When you have a hundred things going on, a hundred things on your mind, and you choose in the middle of those hundred things to stop and lift your hands and say, Jesus, I worship you. You'll never again have a chance at this moment. So that's the power of worship. Because one day, as you stand there and worship, through the darkness that you don't understand, through the sickness when you're believing for healing, one day as you worship, you will be healed. You will be set free. The darkness will be made light. And the Lord himself will appear to you. This is the power of worship.